I regretted it as soon as I signed the papers. Now I was trapped in a steel coffin oozing down the river Styx, magically disguised to look like the LA freeways. <laughs> Hell was a hundred thousand other people and their damned cars. Dear God, I'm sorry I never believed in you, but I need you to put me out of my misery right now. My stupid self bought a house after five years living as an aimless divorce bachelor, eating frozen meals for dinner. It was time to grow up again. I worked in aerospace, and the beach city I lived in burned through, my, through, burned through each paycheck, so I went clear across LA and found something I could actually afford. It was a very practical house with, uh, with no personality. Hell, and the neighbor hell, the neighborhood was developed for literal soldiers. Character would have been designed out of it, on purpose, for military efficiency. But as a second-gen Asian American, I learned from a very young age to suck up being boring and practical, because that's all we could afford. <laughs> After a few months, this hour-long commute continued to suck my life away. One day, I went into my, cat my usual catatonic state, you know, the one everyone had, Thursday afternoon on the 5 South. But as my brain shut off, I had a vision into the future where I was an old man still crawling along in traffic, days from retirement, when suddenly I dropped dead at the wheel, causing even more traffic. <laughs> I was so shaken I had to pull over. As I recovered, I saw the carpooling actually moving and dreamt that I too can enjoy a faster commute. I found my job's rides chair for him, but no one else was crazy enough to make that journey. I posted a friendly request, but knew I was doomed to suffer all alone for my hubris. After a few months, a guy named Benjamin Lee actually responded to my post. I googled his address, and it was way up the hill from where I lived. If this were feudal Europe, his house would be the castle, where I would be the lord and lady's personal cowshed farmer. <laughs> Now I had the opportunity to make my first friend not only A for work, but the other kind of Asian. The rich kind. <laughs> a sleek, dark BMW pulled up next morning. I grinned like the awkward dork I was, looking at things that are way out of my league. There's a grin I flushed at beautiful women. Yes, that one. Ben was so cool, he was, his upscale Armani exchange outfit matched his car all satiny and dark. He was thin enough to wear fitted clothes and actually look good. I own no such shirts or pants because after six Oreos, ha, two suggested servings. I wanted nothing fitted. His cuffs were rolled up twice like GQ dictated to show he was still a professional, but a cool professional, with arm tattoos. His slacks ended short to show off polished loafers without socks. Who had the confidence to wear loafers, let alone without socks? Ended, that's who. I looked down at my cheap khakis and my Target brand polo. I did not coordinate well with Ben's car or his vibe. And I thought I also caught disappointment on his face. I barely had enough time to click on my seatbelt when Ben loudly peeled off, leaving skid marks of high-end tires behind. The car kept accelerating until, boom, he stomped on the aftermarket brakes right on the line of a very visible stop sign. It's not like he jumped out at him. He drove like this through start and stop traffic the entire way. Every time a space formed in front of us, I felt my head jerk back and then a heart stop in the, the pit of my stomach. Maybe this is how cool people drove. People like Letty and Dom and Nina. Maybe nausea was the price for entrance into the cool club. Oh my god, I thought. I need to make conversation. Anything to distract me from this. We started chatting, and of course, Ben got cooler. He also just bought a house, but a cooler one with a view. He had an upbringing very close to mine, only with cooler and richer parents. He also had a girlfriend, probably a cool and pretty girlfriend. That man was smashing the American dream. Meanwhile, I was starting to level over down the life with no cool power ups. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> I told him about the nightmare of a decade coping with getting married, then buying a house, then losing both in the crash, 2008, guys. And then being in a fog of depression for a few years, and then finally coming through the other end after a lot of medicine and therapy. <laughs> Wife was white? He asked. <laughs> that was a weird detail to hang up on in the midst of everything else I said. Especially since white people were literally everywhere. <laughs> I said yes, remembering five Christmases in rural, in rural Oregon where everyone was as white as the snow on Mount Hood. You got lucky, he replied. Thanks, I said. She was smart and cared a lot about her family. The end kind of sucked. Huh, no, brah, he insisted. I mean, aren't they racist? My mind slammed on the brakes like his precious vehicle. It may have been the car sickness, but I was not prepared for racism. After my brain rebooted, I realized he was talking about how Asian men have been culturally asexualized in the West. Okay, Cupid? had data showing how we were ranked the lowest in desirability among white women. I was angry when I read that article shortly after the divorce because it backed, out, it backed up how frustrating it was um, sending friendly messages out and getting nothing back. All I could picture were the mean girls in those teen movies who made that ugh sound at the Asian dorks. Asian dorks like me. <laughs> but treating my depression helped me move past that anger and misogyny. I wanted to bond so bad, but not over cynophobia. <laughs> I mean, you know, dating is tough for everyone, I replied. Yeah. yeah, but they don't like us. That's why I only date Asian girls. They're better, he said. He clocked that I wasn't one of the guys. It was painfully clear. You see, while some of us stay dorks, other Asian men fought against the prejudice by getting hypermasculine. Then they get a CrossFit membership, a supercar with aftermarket parts, a handgun, and a complete set of conservative talking points. Because why the hell would you, uh, why the hell, uh, uh, because who the hell ever went halfsies on right wing ideology? Even though I sat crisscross applesauce right in the middle of the door camp, right next to the fire pit, I still felt guilty for letting him down. I mean, he was so cool. I know I had a lot of therapy, but it wasn't enough to get over my ingrained fear of bullies or the desire to please them. I could feel my cool points clatter to the ground. And if I heard the subtext correctly, I may also be a race traitor. As if I couldn't disappoint him more, I got, uh, I got a quiet snicker when it was my turn to drive, and it, I showed up in my boring hatchback. I don't think he even tried to hide it. At least I drove smoothly. <laughs> Dating seemed to be the only topic we were both interested in. It was the chance for Ben to pontificate about how women should treat their men. And really, relationships fascinated me, but I was very average at them, B plus, tops. I opened up to him about how tough dating was. Ugh, you're too nice, he said. Harsh, but nothing I haven't heard uh, since high school. Ben went on about how attractive women glided through adulthood, walking on the backs of nice beta males who fell at their feet. You had to strategically treat these females with disinterest, even scorn, in order to stand out. I knew the script. Every, yeah, I know, right? Every jock in school regurgitated some version of the game when it first came out. I nodded and threw out the words alpha male just to see if he approved. Now, now, I know that model has been discredited by wildlife experts. Wolf packs follow matriarchy, everyone. But let me have this. My cool points were looking like my shitty bowling average. 
and I need, I need, I needed all the bumpers I could get. I'm a sigma, Ben replied. What the hell was that? Was that even a thing? I very coolly asked what sigmas were, trying to draw all skepticism out of my voice because I didn't want to disappoint him. Again. <laughs> Let me tell you, sigmas are like alpha, but introverted. Ben said. That still made no sense until he... <laughs> still made no sense until he explained that alphas were the lone wolves, natural leaders who didn't need all those beta males to prop them up. Alphas were so five years ago, it was embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so less Charles Manson and more Ted Bundy. Got it. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Back home, I looked up sigmas to see if it, ev it was even a term scientists used. The word only popped up on sites for men's rights activists. They were all hot for traditional gender roles and conspiracy theories. This was a huge... <laughs> this was a huge step, but was it a step too far? Was it a step too far to leave a carpool? <laughs> I returned to that vision of angry drivers honking at my geriatric corpse. I was having a crisis. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind carpool. Okay, aside from the nausea. But I was reliving high, high school trauma all over again. I thought I left that buried in my past or deep, deep in my subconscious. I didn't so much as deal with my bully as graduate away from him. <laughs> Holding up a proud tradition of dorks and nerds since the concept of high school began. Ben was starting to remind me of my bully, Albert. Never turn your back on an Albert. I wanted him to like me, but I would now have to agree with stuff that was just simply wrong, or wrong and problematic. I don't know, man. I wanted that in, but at what cost? But Ben did say I was being too nice. I decided that my rule going forward was to not die on small hills and try my best to be diplomatic. But if he said something like, women belong in the kitchen, or their backs. I had to stop them. Over the, next, over the next week, I could tell that there was trouble in paradise, but he was too masculine to just say, I need to have a conversation with my girlfriend. So instead, he said, shouldn't real men expect a home-cooked meal after work? Oh, God. Gender roles. That was a note for me. Home-cooked meals are nice. No one could deny I was 100% right. <laughs> the next point he made was that women were too emotional. <laughs> I did not have the training for this. <laughs> e everyone can be? I replied, again, <laughs> non-falsifiable. <laughs> I'm not, he said. I'm 100% logical. <laughs> wait, wait, that literally can't happen, I said. <laughs> Fear alone keeps you alive. I was going to say that paladins who became immune to fear as they leveled up were not a good thing. But I was afraid he would excommunicate me out of the cool cub and his car right there in the middle of the freeway. See? Fear does keep you alive. He fell silent for a moment. Clearly, I was missing the point. He then brought up a thought experiment that terrified him. Not that he felt terror. Get a little... Would you feel like less of a man if your wife made more than you? <laughs> no! I'd laugh all the mates in the bank! <laughs> because that would be awesome! <laughs> the 
air got thick and rich like his heated leather seat. <laughs> ben went quiet. He was opening up in the only way he would allow himself to, but I made a joke about it. I realized that there must have been a fight when his girlfriend didn't follow his ideas of, what a, of how a woman should act. He just wanted some reassurance that his emotions were valid, not that he would admit to any. <laughs> Instead, I was such a dick about it. But his masculinity wouldn't let him show hurt feelings, so we kept carpooling. <laughs> After a few months, I ran, at, I ran into him at the... At, Sorry, excuse me. After a few months, I ran into him at the annual security training. It was where they reminded us what we couldn't say outside windowless buildings like mine. It was the first time Ben and I saw each other outside of carpooling. He had just received his clearance. For once, being a bigger nerd meant I knew something he didn't. The officers assured us that it was okay to just let them know if we slipped. It was a different story if we had brought boxes and boxes and boxes of secrets home, you know? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> to reward us for paying attention, security would show us how our products were being used in the field. So, so it was only natural for every single noob to feel like they found out Santa was real and the Americans were keeping him secret so that the Russians couldn't have him. <laughs> they all get wide-eyed, they all get wide-eyed and sparkly. Ben, despite all of his coolness, was no different. <laughs> it was really endearing to watch, but I wasn't gonna tell him that. That night, Ben climbed into my car, buzzing with newfound secrets. As soon as the door closed, he asked, hey, why can't we say, outside. <laughs> now, despite the fact that my car had been a confessional this entire time, a secure facility designed to handle state secrets, it was not. Hell, we were carrying hackable recording and tracking devices. <sighs> Damn it, now I had to decide if I was going to be cool or a narc. Dude, I thought, we just had training. It brought me back to all the, threaten, uh, all the bullies who threatened us to be cool when they did stupid shit and the teacher got us all in trouble. That injustice burned in my do-gooder heart. And the pranks weren't that funny anyway. Did I even want Ben's approval? Did I expect my partner to be making dinner and earning less than me <laughs> so I could feel like a real man? Then I had a realization, shit, this was gonna totally show up in my, this was totally gonna show up when they refreshed my background check. You know what, fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. The next day, I told security. That was a step too far for Ben. <laughs> I got a curt email from him that said, I don't think it would be a good idea to carpool anymore. <laughs> There's such liberty in failing. I no longer had the burden of his version of coolness. I had to choose who to betray. One side gave me work I believed in. The other just had a slick BMW, nice clothes, a cool house, and what seemed to be a resilient girlfriend who would be fine on her own. These could never just rub off on me anyway. I had to find my own. I decided Ben simply wasn't who I wanted to be, whiplash and nausea notwithstanding. I may never be Ben Lee cool, but us dorks did the right thing. Yeah. Hoen Mack, ladies and gentlemen, Hoen.